So this misunderstood Jim. I want to start this off too by saying um, I had a live stream a, a while back uh, where I put together a DIY Waru. Uh, oh, yeah. it, it was a silly nonsense type stream. And, um, and it, it, the weirdest thing, this happened about maybe three weeks ago. I checked Twitter and I have a heart, like a love, like the like on Twitter, the heart uh, from the Vonda Inn McIntyre Literary Estate. <laughs> That's wonderful. She liked I don't, you know, so much time has gone by since that live stream and she, uh, this estate likes that tweet yeah, because she passed away this year. I want to yeah, say it's, that, that's, that's horrible. Sure. You know, I'm sure she wrote many good books. Uh, and uh, you know, somebody out there likes the crystal star. I mean, I've I wanted us to do some of the star Trek movie novelizations and she wrote those, uh, several of those. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, here's, this is surprising. Uh, 57% are five star reviews. Wow. This is fascinating. So for those of you who don't know or are new to the e, the Star Wars expanded universe and stuff, the Crystal Star is considered one of the worst Star Wars books ever written. Written by uh Vonda A N McIntyre, who this is the this is the only novel she wrote for Star Wars. She came off of Star Trek, which um, there have been many authors who wrote Star Trek and wrote Star Wars, but they're two different beasts. And Crystal Star's big problem is it probably would have worked as a Star Trek book, but it's not very Star Warsy at all. No. Uh, Matthew hates this book. My eyes twitching already thinking about it. I kind of indifferent to it because I've read so much worse, in my opinion, of Star Wars, especially in the last, what, how many years into Disney are we now? What is it? Six? Six years, maybe? Six, seven? Six years. And the lack of quality control on a consistent level of garbage. Uh, Crystal Star's almost quaint at this point. In the <laughs> department. It's funny. As much as I hate it, it's uh, one of the more popular things discussed on my channel. It is. Well, I mean, you, you literally have a, a spam Twitter account called the Waru Slayer. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, GIFs on the uh, Giphy. You can just type in uh, the Geeks Attic. Uh, you'll find things with uh, the Crystal Star. <laughs> Silly nonsense. <laughs> uh, so what do you guys want to dive into first? Do you want to go to a five-star review? Yeah, or one -star? I'm curious because, I mean, I don't. I would not give this book five stars, but I wouldn't give it one star either. Yeah. Uh, I give it a zero star. See, these are, this is, this one's a good one. A five star review. Uh, <laughs> good. <laughs> I knew it. I knew we could get garbage like this. Thank you, G user GLT. Really appreciate that review. Fine review. <laughs> Kindle customer, they gave it a five, uh, five star. Says my audio collection. I guess I don't know what these uh, these links are to. I'm not going to click those. Uh, it says I have read the book before and loved it. Then I found it on audio, and the cats sit next to the stereo listening to this intently. Then they dressed up as Jedi for Halloween. Okay, what does that mean? Someone's trying to be funny there. Did um, did she? Tr did this poor person? I'm assuming she, because crazy cat lady, could be dressed like, her cats up like Jedi. Her poor felines up as Jedi. Yeah, that's uh, horrible. Uh, I'm sure this is going to be a. The audiobook is probably abridged. Oh yeah, because yeah. Uh, with the unless your name's Timothy Zahn, uh, um, all Bantam Star Wars books are abridged. Yeah. See, this is this is a pathetic review right here too. Um, Shipped fast, and my husband loved it. That's a five-star review. Just because it's shipped fast, and your husband liked it. So it's not even a review. It's not even a review from the person who like read the book. It's not even a review about the quant, uh, the what, the content of the book. It's just a review on shipping. Yeah. So that, oh, he got here fast. Five stars. <laughs> Hey, sometimes, you know, you, especially in a COVID world, it's very hard to actually get an Amazon package to ship quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Although yeah. That, that's from how, when was that? That uh, was in 2000, 2016. 
Ooh, we got an old one from 01. Okay, this is going to be great. Um, Although there have been many reviews putting this book down, I liked it. Leia and Han's children have been kidnapped, along with Chewie and R2-D2. She follows the kidnapper's trail and discovers that it is much deeper than a simple kidnapping. While Luke, Han, 3PO are on a planet called Qureshi. I don't know how people say that word. I always said Qureshi. I have uh, the same. Yeah, which one of its stars is dying and causing a disruption in the Force and is cutting off Leia and Luke from contacting each other through the Force. Also on Qureshi is a mysterious alien named Waru. Uh, who performs miraculous healings, uh, which has caused a cult-like following. Okay, pretty boring review there, pretty basic. I mean, to be fair, that's the best review we've it read. Is. Yeah, it is. It's it's an actual review. But it's more of a synopsis than a review. This is very true, too. Wow, yeah. See, I, you guys are commenting there in the comments. Christopher, thank you for joining, Chris. Uh, it says, read the review entitled Misunderstood Jim. Okay. Oh, wow. That's a... Oh, no. Oh, no way. Oh, man. Here we go. This is huge. Should I really read that? <laughs> Which of your kids just sounded like a sprained door? I know. They're, they're not wanting to go to bed. <laughs> horrible. Like, they heard what I was doing. They're like, no, no, Waru. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give them some ether. That's put a little ether in a rag. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, this misunderstood Jim. <laughs> I'm not reading that. That's, That's just too big. <laughs> That's what she said. Okay. <laughs> That's too much to read on here. No, I'm read not, it. Way to read it? it. Oh my gosh. Read okay. It. Might actually be a genuine review. Okay. The problem this book faced upon release was the fact that a number of vocal internet fans derided it, it for being wait for dare. See, I'm a horrible reader. When it comes to being live on here, the the the, uh, the stress gets to me. Uh, the problem this book faced upon release was the fact that a number of vocal internet fans derided it for daring to move Star Wars away from the harder sci-fi trappings of authors like Stackpole and into more experimental fantasy terrain. Phantom Star Wars line was beginning to fall into a creative lull as a too terrestrial, too familiar element began to dominate books like the X-Wing series with its overdue of stock aliens, American anachronisms, and pervasively homogeneous culture, causing the Star Wars universe to suddenly feel a bit tired and uh, prosaic. Vonda McIntyre sought to fix that by taking her story in a completely different creative direction. It, that's true. Yeah. Uh, the Star Wars Expanded Universe exists in both comics and novels long before Zahn wrote his first word and yeah, that's also true uh, and diversity of storytelling was built it was built into it from the start the Crystal Star gets a lot of points from remembering that part of the film Shrinks was its sense of awe and mystery McIntyre doesn't just uh, regurgitate the same planets, alien races and situations but creates fascinating new ones to be sure there is a lot of weirdness to be found and it's one of the book's charms. Uh, I've got a kid down there yelling at me. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry. Um, okay. Mom is taking care of it. Uh, years later, the Yuzhan Vong would bring horrific weirdness to new levels. And years before, Alan Moore brought uh, Lovecraftian weirdness to the Star Wars universe. Dark Horse's Tales, comic series, and visionaries would see even more experimental narratives in the front. Uh, forefront, but prior to the prequel trilogy and at the height of corporate cloned and new, uh, neutered Seattle grunge bands, the things that were different were hardly appreciated. Jeez. This is a legit review, guys. Uh, McIntyre was also the first to utilize the solo kids as main characters, which was another factor some fans didn't like. True, it highlighted the uniqueness of the kids and their special abilities with the Force. McIntyre may have created only uh, precocious children, but the real issue was that some resented the kids because of what they represented, the start of a new era, and one in which the solo children would grow up to take the mantle from the older generation and which is seeing fruition now in the brilliant legacy novels. Back then, however, many simply weren't ready for that, or for stories in which kids handle mature situations in intelligent ways, a staple of classic children fantasy literature. You liking this review, Jeremy? 
I am. It's actually a, it's a genuine review other than a ship fast. It's ship fast and my husband life likes it. <laughs> so is there a way to vote things down? I guess we, that's what we should have done. We should have reported abuse on that. Uh, it's shipped fast review. <laughs> Jeez. You want me to continue this? Yeah. Uh, some have also cited McIntyre as failing to represent. Wait, did I read that? No. Uh, some have also cited McIntyre as failing to present correct characterizations, Luke being the most misunderstood in this regard. Uh, here, the book suffered due to the fact that Bantam released it out of chronological sequence and prior to the book, which revealed... Uh, that he lost Callista. Thus, Luke is affected not just by the proximity of an imploding star, which is caused, which is causing strange effects in the Force, uh, nor just by Waru's influence, by the pain loss of an important love interest. McIntyre presents Luke as a human being, not a superhero, and one in which ex external and internal factors contribute to cause deep emotional turmoil. On his own, without his wife or steady conscience in the form of Chewie, Han finds himself looking back upon an old life that he enjoyed but left behind to become more responsible. Now with kids that now with kids that old life is forever gone. So at this bittersweet stage of his life, walks back into the life of an old girlfriend and potent reminder of headier days. Han's response is sorry. Han's response to her is realistic, and so is Luke's to his. Uh, Zaveri herself is robust and fascinating <laughs> and a welcome addition to the cast. Uh, finally, Leia's characterization was attacked and overreactive primarily by those who don't understand that, uh, understand that to be a parent is to overreact. Okay. Sorry. Like I said, I'm a bad reader when it comes to being alive. It's okay. You're doing just fine. Okay. But Rather than become crippled by her fears and worries, Leia goes into action and takes charge. Her perspective is an important one in the book and one that continues to bolster the character as a woman, as a leader, as a politician, and as a mother. On the antagonist front, Hethrer, is that what you would say? What? Uh, Hethrer? 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 In many ways seems to be the standard Star Wars villain, cut from the cloth of Palpatine, but without the years of mischievian wisdom. Wait, Mish, what, Machiavellian wisdom? Never read that word before. Uh, his relationship with his son Tigris and later young Anakin are of interest, as is his Achilles heel, his greed, which turns him into a pawn of Waru, truly one of the weirdest Star Wars villains ever created. That's something from EC Horror Comics and Call of Cthulhu combined. Waru is a refreshingly different creature in the Star Wars uh, Melu and a lot of fun to boot. This person is a liar. <laughs> I find the Crystal Star refreshing and a lot of fun uh, with some intriguing and well-drawn characterizations that portray heroes struggling with important issues, abandoning the, high, abandoning the hard sci-fi tedium that has crept into the series with a more fantasy-flavored element, the book remains one of the most interesting and diverse of the Star Wars novels, a thematic predecessor of sorts to the New Jedi Order and a continuation of the more mysterious experimental Star Wars out outings like Dark Empire and some of the old Marvel tales highly recommended. Ugh. Too positive for the Crystal Star. <laughs> I will say that the, this per uh, individual brings up some great points. They do. They really do. Makes but me want to reread it. <laughs> They they forget to they don't add in that a crystal star was yet another book that had the cliche of what do we do with Luke? He's too powerful. Uh, there's a star that's affecting his force ability. Yeah. It's almost as bad as like the storm thing in Planet of Twilight, where people get struck by lightning if Luke uses the force. That Weird. would that's the dumbest. Um. Uh, being someone who just read finished *Air of the Empire* with the Islamari, the the creatures mm -hmm. that uh, mask the Force. Yeah, I that always think those I, are silly. It's silly, but it hadn't been done before. Mm -hmm. And then, like that, caused this whole "we got to neuter Luke's power" thing. Yeah, yeah. And this book is no exception to that. The one positive that like I always say with this book is this is the first time we see Jenna and Jason do something. It's the best part of the book. I, I, I like that this user neglected to mention Luke swimming around in Waru. 
Yes, they left that important detail out. Which is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I kind of glanced at this next review, and I'm wondering if this is a like a troll positive review. I don't know. Okay. Uh, it says, are you people all crazy? A five-star review. This is in 2000. Okay, this book is probably the best Star Wars book ever written. <laughs> How can you not like it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's been forever since I read it, and I have to again, so I don't really have too many uh, specifics on why it's the best. But you they, people, they specific wrong. Yeah, it's uh, yeah specifics on why it's the best. But you people should just know. I love the fact that this is you. I loved the fact that in this you really get to see more of Jaina and Jason than most of the others. But even though I really don't have. To, have details this book is the best star wars book that i have ever read and that's kind of a lot and at least this book has a good writer unlike some i mean a lot of books have a great plot this being one of them <laughs> but the author is awful this not being one of them so just whatever you people think you what you want but this will always be my favorite star wars book of all time confusing review here and i definitely would give this book an that's not and, how you definitely. I, I would give, I would, yeah, def, defiantly give definitely this book, give this book and 13 out of 10. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Two people found that one helpful. And 13? Yeah. And 13 out of 10. <laughs> Oof. Ooh. This is before text message speak. Oh, Chris says in the comments, I, I've said this twice now already, but I can't wait for them to find out the review is written by Joe from Star Wars Timeline.net. No Star Wars dummy, an EU author himself. Wow. Okay. Oh, that makes sense that Joe would defend it. I mean, it was a legit review. I mean, it sounded like it was definitely a professional writer for sure who yeah. wrote that review. And spell specifically wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's the real truth right there um let's switch to one star reviews Just one star yeah we gotta hit the polars okay yeah um you know what okay i was gonna see if it had a, a sort like the most helpful i want to know what the most helpful one was uh, be these two on the top here okay book here we go that was a four star review, people. Good book, no capitalization. Wait, that was a four star? Yeah. Good book. Hey, you know, I guess their copy didn't ship fast. Oh, just plain awful. There we go. That's what Matthew wants to read right there. Two Amy specifics. <laughs> Thank you, quality. All right, here we go with the one stars. Um, this is, yeah, just plain awful. I'm in complete agreement with those who panned this trash. The book has had nothing to redeem it. The whole narrative reads like a children's book. I suspect that it had been read at story time in daycare center. Nap time would have been, uh, would have progressed swiftly. Shame on Miss McIntyre for foisting this on the reading public and on the editor for allowing it to be published. Ouch. It's kind of a harsh negative review though. Yes, yes, it's there. It is. <laughs> uh, I ordered Star Wars: The Crystal Star, but inside a is a book by James Clemens, The Witch Fire. What the heck? So they <laughs> so they gave it a one star review. <laughs> oh man. Um, we were very unhappy. Here's another one. Very unhappy. Star Wars book was sent to 10-year-old son. A Star Wars cover was placed over a book about witches. A very bad book. We were disgusted. <laughs> you know, they're probably fundamental Christian. <laughs> I, I guess. But, That's I mean... Funny. It's like, now they're like, son, we're sorry. We tried it, but you're never allowed to read Star Wars again. God, can you imagine that? That'd be awful. It'd be like... I mean, but, sure, I mean, come on. These it's people like, uh, know it's about witches. It's like, well, what is a Jedi? A space wizard? Right? Yeah. So, wizard, witch. I mean, I when I went to Christian school, they said Star Wars was evil and I was going to go to hell. 
Mm. That was a thing that they told a kindergartner. Wow. And my my church on a Father's Day one year gave us all the dad's shirts that had a picture of Yoda, and it said, Yoda, best dad. That's funny. Yeah. Um, but, like, I remember on Matt Wilkins, it was an early episode of Princes of the Universe, someone sent him a message saying that his first Star Wars book was the Jedi like Jediism book, like the religion Jediism. Wow. I'm like, that's oh. unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, all American Corbett in the comics says all of these one star reviewers are blasphemers and do not deserve the grace of Waru. <laughs> Waru for president. Yeah. Uh, Rob D says Crystal Star about to fling itself at Matthew again. Uh, yeah, I hope not. I've got it put in chains back there behind me. Um, Quality says uh, Waru is disappointed. And what would be worse uh, for these people, witches or Waru? Waru? I would definitely say Waru would be worse than the witches. A great book, The Witches and the Waru. Yeah, The Witches of Waru. Waru's Witches. But it was misprinted. It was supposed to be a B, not a W. Uh, Small Time says, I like that we have people who haven't read it, giving it a one star and five star reviews. Yeah, that's what people do. I'm not gonna read. This, uh, I'm not gonna read another really long one. No, uh, we gotta get some 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 just funny ones here. Oh, that oh, one. Okay, this one looks interesting. Uh, Star Wars: Deep Space Suck. That's probably an adult film. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah. Title of a review on Amazon. YouTube that's people. Fair. Uh, check out my uh, OnlyFans. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, Luke Skywalker, the premier Jedi of the galaxy, gets sucked into a cult religion way too easily. The only lightsaber action is the villain cutting 3PO in half. Han Solo does not fire his blaster even once. The Mill- Millennium Falcon does not engage in combat. The Solo kids are main characters. This book is not space opera. This book was boring and stupid. <laughs> This book is the worst Star Wars novel I have ever read. This is the only book to ever provoke me to write a letter to the author. I explained to her why I didn't like the book. I asked her if she had ever actually seen a Star Wars movie. I asked politely for my money back. The author never replied. What would you expect, you idiot? But most importantly, the author never admitted that this novel was based on a rejected Star Trek Deep Space Nine script she wrote. If the story wasn't good enough for the worst Star Wreck show of them all it sure as heck isn't good enough for star wars instead okay. of okay i i'm triggered right now this is 2007 so we don't have jj abrams alex kurtzman garbage right. that has star trek's name on it yeah how dare you say that deep space nine is worse than enterprise enterprise is a gigantic waste of time deep space nine is a nice experiment on um it does the prime directive work like that's the whole point of that show but um yeah that like i've said numerous times it was very clear that this read like star trek Mm -hmm. and that it's like a deep space nine script makes total sense i wonder if that's if that's like actually true (laughs) and it's people don't do that don't write the author. Don't write a letter to the author and tell them how crappy their book was. I mean, that's that's as much as I dislike this book as much as I dislike the new cancer, which I've, you know, Chuck Windig, for instance, his reactions and stuff. I didn't. I never went to him and said, "You're an idiot. Your your writing sucks. You're an idiot." You don't do that. You talk about how bad the book is. Like, oh, I don't like the writing style. I don't like the author's choice here. You don't uh, directly attack an author and say, I want my money back. Give me my money. Like, they're going to give you money back. It's so stupid. Yeah. But that's just society today, I guess. I, mean, I guess back in 2007, people were doing the same thing. I actually wrote the wrote the author and asked for my money back. Trash compactor worthy. Ooh. All right. This reads like the author was given a brief synopsis of Star Wars and never actually saw any of the movies. Is English also not the author's first language because it's written very awkwardly throughout the entire book? I actually knew this book was going to be terrible, so I had no expectations going into it, and I was right. It's terrible. Possibly the worst Star Wars book I've ever read. It's like a bad fanfic that a 12-year-old wrote. 
Yeah. Okay. That's a bad way to go into a book. That's how I started to go into Dawn of the Jedi into the void. And I'm just like, you know what? Let's let's open our mind. And it turns out I love Dawn of the Jedi into the void. Just an unpopular opinion. I'm mm-hmm. waiting to just get crucified in the, the comment mm-hmm. section. Quality defend me. Nope. Don't attack. Quality, quality loves it possibly more than I do. So take that, Matthew. Um, good Lord. What a load of crap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, KJA is no longer the worst Star Wars author on the planet. So, Kevin J. Anderson? Oh, he's one. Okay. We, okay, here we go. That honor sick now resides with Vonda. This was the first Star Wars book I've ever, but that I felt ripped off buying in hardcover. Ugh. Where to begin with this deep hurting? The characters were all wrong. The story didn't have the Star Wars feel. That ending. What the hell was that about? I still can't figure out what was happening. And the villain was boring. Avoid this book at all costs. This novel wasn't released. It escaped. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, <you know. laughs> all right. Do you want to get one more of these one stars and we switch to another book? Yeah, that sounds fine to me. Um, bad? Well, yeah. the director bad and then terribly boring lame. Since they're both really short. The character, this is bad. Uh, The characters in this book are all cartoons of the people from the movies. All development (laughs) prior to this novel has been ignored. All character development has been ignored. All common sense has been ignored with the weird force blotting stuff. This is a bad book. One of the worst I've ever read. So you know what I'm seeing with these last two that we read? It sounds like they're talking about The Last Jedi talking about canon am i wrong is that the biggest argument is oh they didn't follow through with the characters everything previous to this was ignored yeah it it sounds very similar in these reviews this was in 2001 that other one was oh there's a 1998 review wow yeah i forget that amazon's that old yeah terrible boring and lame I have read almost all of the Star Wars universe novels. This one was so boring and predictable and lame. Yawn. All right. Uh, Call Yantism in the comments says, nowadays the authors write us readers how terrible we are and how awesome their books are. That's true. Very true. All American Corporate Jeremy likes Yawn of the Jedi. I'm going to write him a letter calling him stupid and ask for my money back. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Dawn of the Jedi. I like that whole era of stuff, even though there's not much to it. That's funny, Rob D. I remember the first time I read through the Legends novels timeline printed in the books. The Crystal Star sounded like a cool title, and I figured it would be interesting. Wrong. (laughs) 